Hey everybody, so I want to start doing some kind of reviews and stuff with the channel, so just finished the first episode of Game of Thrones for season 7, at least the latest season, um, just want to do a little recap, so I'm going to try and do the beginning of this as a spoiler free, um, I apologize if there's any noise and stuff, we're actually in a hotel room tonight because our AC went out, so, um, episode, so they began the episode as well as they ended the last episode of last season. Um, it was really good. It was a really good scene. The whole story that's carrying on there is a pretty impressive story. Um, after that, the episode is just a lot of... It, there wasn't a lot of wow factor after that point. It was more of a filler episode almost. Um, but, I mean, in the same sense, you have to understand that it's the beginning of the final season of this show. And there's a lot of really big story arcs that are coming into play and everything's kind of building to this point so that all these massive stories can get tied up and basically there's these giant wars that are about to happen so that's it was a pretty impressive episode like I said it wasn't it wasn't as thrilling after the first you know seven to ten minutes uh, the rest of it's just mostly story and building up on what's coming. You did get to see a few characters and how their stories are playing out and you know where they left off from the last season to where they're at now. Um, beyond that, like I said, it, it, it felt more of a filler episode, but in the same sense, I understand that they, because of the way they ended last season, they have to wrap up a few things before they can really begin this season so with that being said I'm going to go completely spoiler heavy from this point forward so if you don't want any spoilers you don't want to know how the show plays out then stop it here um, so the beginning of the beginning of this episode the first scene that opens up it's Walter Frey and he's giving this big speech and if you saw the last season you know Frey's supposed to be dead so you kind of knew what was happening, that it was Arya, and basically that she was about to slaughter all the Freys. If you didn't realize what was happening, I apologize, I knew as soon as I saw Frey what was about to happen, and then when the wine came out, I knew how she was doing it. I'm sure most people did, because it's kind of the way she's been trained as this, this killer. So that was great, loved the way it began. Um, then after the episode, uh, intro goes through you know we start to see um Jon Snow at um at Winterfell talking to the men and then him and Sansa get into a bit of a spat in front of their men so it makes him look bad but at the same time she's worried he won't respect her because she's gone through so much and she's been treated like just this girl She's trying to get him to realize that she's not just a girl, that she, she is intelligent, that she does know what's going on, and that he should listen to her. And in truth, he should. Should it be done in front of the army? Probably not, because then it looks like there might be some kind of differences between them and that there could be some kind of internal inner struggle. So that's, I think that's more what he's worried about. He wants her counsel, but at the same sense, he still knew at this end and all in all realization he's still young even though he was commander of the night's watch he's still a he's still a young um a young guy so he's not going to know how to really handle all this leadership you know i mean look what happened with the lord's watch he ended up getting betrayed and killed and now he's back and so that's i'm sure that still sits on his mind like what he did or what happened to him there you know plus he's trying to uh keep honor of what he assumes is his dad Ned he's trying to remember to honor Ned in the whole scheme of things and make sure Ned's legacy doesn't get ruined and you know that the north doesn't get ruined and now that Ned's gone and in the sense I, I get where he's coming from you know you don't punish the son for the sins of the father but that's always been an interesting quote in life is that you know in life the son carries the weight of the of the sins of the father you know that's the way things are is the father's legacy if he makes bad choices they carry over to the son and i like that john's trying to keep that from happening and most of it is because you know he's a bastard in this scenario it literally almost every 
everybody in the entire Stark family had to die before he became head of the Stark house. And even then, the only way he was really made a true Stark is, uh, thanks to Sansa, Sansa, I believe. So then we get in, we see more of Bronn, uh, Bran, and um, I can't think of her name now. It's an M name. Anyways, the young lady that's with him, that's been helping him this entire time. Uh, and they get to Castle Black. So the question is, will him and John eventually meet up? Will John find out that he's still alive? Will Sansa find out he's still alive? Same thing with with um, Arish, because she assumes everybody's dead. You know, will they ever end up meeting back up? So we'll see where that goes. Then we get a lot of Sandor Clegane's character, and he's with Lord uh, Bolton and the Fire Priest, and we see a little bit more of his characterization as a human being you know he ends up back on the farm where him and Arya had been before and you know he sees that the father and the, the child died and how they died so it it's interesting to see his character I really like his character um, at first when he's giving the whole spiel about what he's seeing in the fire I thought at first maybe he was just making it up that he was just completely trying to bluff him or whatever However, he, he didn't. It seems like he was completely genuine in what he saw in the flames. So I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff from him. I'm pretty sure we're going to see him fight his zombie brother before it's all said and done. And I have a feeling it's going to require the Lord of Light to, to kill the, the mountain's husk or whatever he is now. Zombie. So that whole scene between him and... and um, the fire priest was interesting. I like Sandor Clegane's character. His, uh, Arya's and Sansa's, they're one of the, the, the characters that have come such a long way in this whole, uh, story arc across all the episodes and all the seasons. So there are others that have, you know, they've matured, but those three specifically, their characters have taken 180 turns. So... Um, then we see some more of Arya when she meets up with the troops from the Lannister house. And I think she's, I think maybe she realized that they're not all bad in that sense that she sees that these are just, they're just guys that got sucked up into a war that they never really wanted. Mostly just want to be back with their families. You know, the one guy has got a kid, but he has no idea if it's a girl or a boy. And so I think her getting to see that that realization that not all soldiers are bad, they're, you know, sometimes they're just doing what they have to do to survive, um, kind of gave her a little bit of a real world view of what's going on. Um, then you see some more of Sansa and Baelish, and we all know what Baelish is after, uh, and so does Sansa at this point. You know, she's just trying to fend him off but still use him for the army that she needs from him. Uh, we see a little bit more of, <laughs> see a little bit more of Brienne of Tarth and uh, Tormund in their little flirty situation and him telling um, Podrick that he's a lucky man because he gets to spar with Brienne and stuff. So that's a, I, I don't ever see that going any further as far as them being a couple, but it's funny. It's very cute the way he, uh, pursues her and she just kind of shuts it down so Cersei and Jaime and their whatever's going on there you know they've they're the only two people left in their family and it's a weird scenario and I think he blames her for the death of at least one of the kids the most innocent of them which was Tommen and of course last season he had his daughter die in his arms and I don't think he knows where he is at this point and of course she brings in um um, the Greyjoy family because he's got a proposition to marry her he's got an armada of ships that he thinks can go out and take care of the Dragon Queen um, and of course we see that she's aware that Tyrion's with them and that she knows that Jaime let him loose so now they're coming they're basically in her, it's her past is coming back to haunt her and she needs to squash it now and like I said with Jamie, though, I'm not sure he's completely bought into this whole situation 100%. I think, I still think, and I've told people, I think he's going to be becoming a Queen Slayer because it foreshadows him being the King Slayer and how much 
crap he got for it that it seems like she's going to go crazy enough to the point that he may have to kill her and then with the title of Queen Slayer. However, I think if he ends up killing her, he'll probably kill himself. Like, I don't think he'll be able to live after that point. But we'll see. That's just one theory I have. Uh, then we move into uh, some of Sam's story. We see that he's trying to become a maester, and you get a little bit of a glimpse of what it's like to become a maester. Basically, you're a slave in the Citadel until they decide that you're worthy enough or you've spent enough time in the service of others to become a maester and start getting your rings and stuff like that. And However, he does have a maester there that he has convinced or who believes him and his stories about the White Walkers and stuff like that. So they give him access to some of the books that he needs, and then we find out he found out where they get Dragon Glass, and that it's on uh, Dragon's Own Island. So he's going to write a letter to John, and we'll see what happens from there with that. You see him find that. Um, we get back into going back with the whole Arya situation. You know, the, I knew Ed Sheeran was going to be in this uh, episode or in this season. And, of course, my wife called it as soon as she heard him singing. So, you know, he did a great job as one of the soldiers. So, a little, little cameo they had there. Also, when we're looking at Sam and his, um, his study to become a maester, we see him collecting food bowls. And then this hand shoots out and almost grabs him. And you hear the voice. And uh, it is the voice of the bear. Um, and he's basically looking for information for uh, whether or not Daenerys has come or not. And so as of right now, nobody knows that Daenerys... They know she's on her way, or they have rumors that she's on her way, but not that she's actually landed in Dragon's home. Which Jamie nailed as far as where he assumed she would go. Which, of course, that's her birthplace, it's abandoned, it's a good place to start at. So after we see him, then we skip over to Daenerys, and she arrives at Dragonstone, and they get out. Um... And basically make wind their way into Dragonstone and you spend four minutes watching them walk you know through the gates of Dragon well, four minutes probably more than that watch walking through the gate of Dragonstone and then up the steps and in through Dragonstone and she pulls on the Baratheon banner and then they finally make it into the war room where the giant table is that's got the map and stuff on it and she says you know shall we begin and the episode's over so a good waste of about six minutes of her just walking through Dragonstone and Dragonstone Castle so Anyways, that's my recap on the episode. Like I said, it was a good episode, really good beginning, had as good a beginning as it had as the ending of the uh, season finale last season. However, the rest of the episode was kind of like, mm, just a little bit of story to get us along the way and kind of show us where everybody's at at this point. Come back out and we'll review next week's episode and my thoughts and opinions. Um, some, the some theories I have with this season. Um, and I'm sure everybody's got them, you know. We know, you know, we know who Jon Snow's parents are. We know that he and Daenerys are related. So there's two of your dragon riders. Um, I personally feel strongly that Tyrion is a uh, Targaryen as well. I don't, I think that's why T uh, Tywin hated him so much. So I think that's our third dragon rider. But then again, the foreshadowing of how he, you know, always wanted to be a dragon rider. He wanted to ride a dragon after reading stories. I think that kind of kills that theory. So maybe there's somebody else out there that we're missing. Um, some other theories I've heard is that there's a dragon in the wall, that it's an ice dragon. Why John's ice and Daenerys is fire. I don't, I don't think so. It's possible. Um, I just, I don't know how an ice dragon would help them with the undead army, especially since they live in the ice. But we'll see. We'll see where that goes. So I'm curious to see where they go. I think possibly that the Hound may end up as a fire priest. It would make sense, especially since he's afraid of fire as of right now because of what happened to him when he was younger. I think it would be an interesting little twist for him to become a priest of the light. I guess they're going to head north towards the wall and possibly towards the castle that Clegane saw in the fire. In the books, it because I've read the books and I've watched all the episodes that have been on. In the books, when Sam gets to the um, Maester Citadel, he ends up meeting this guy who's been working with Obsidian and stuff, and it almost seems like magic's coming back. Uh, but 
I don't know as far as the show goes if they're going to take that route. Maybe Dragons is as far as it goes and the light, Lord of Light and stuff like that. Maybe that's as far as the magic's going to go. I'd like to see them get a little more in depth. My whole thing with this series is it seems like magic may have existed prior to the dragons, like with the dragons, and then when they died out it kind of faded out. And then that explains why as the dragons are coming back, you know, the Lord of Light's followers are getting a little more gifts as far as like summoning flames and seeing in the fires and what Melisandre has done. So I kind of would like to see like as the dragons gain power then maybe magic comes back, but that might be a little too in the fantasy genre. Uh, for Game of Thrones, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and end this for the night, because until tomorrow.